Okay, thank you very much. Let me first thank uh, the organizers for inviting me. Uh, this talk will be mainly <clears throat> about two papers. Uh, one that is from uh, uh, 2021, with, um, uh, which has the same title as the title of my talk. And I will um, finish the talk by mentioning some uh, recent results that just appeared in uh, PRL. Uh, that's the paper number two uh, down on the screen um, to, to say the relation between the two. Uh, so the, the first paper is mainly numerical results on a specific problem. Uh, and the number two paper is the application of the so-called uh, uh, non-perturbative functional renormalization group by uh, Leonie Canet. Um, on the same problem and uh, uh, recovering <clears throat> some, most of the results in a more traditional uh, statistical mechanics setting. Okay, so so this work, the first one was done with Carlos Cartes, Enrique Tirapegui and Raul Candid, uh, uh, Raul Pandit, sorry. Uh, and the um, second one was done with the... Uh, uh, Ver, Ceci, and Fontaine, two students of Leonie Canet and Leonie Canet herself. About Raoul Pandit, let me mention, I don't have time in this talk, that we have some very recent nice results on um, Gross-Pitayevsky uh, problem for self-gravitating superfluids, uh, but I don't have time to talk about that. Hopefully, Raoul will. Um, okay, so uh, what is the subject? Uh, the subject is that in the 2021 work, we found a temporal scaling that was unpredicted by the perturbative renormalization group and field theory. And in the letter, uh, as I said before, uh, we were able to recover this uh, scaling using a non-perturbative non version of the function renormalization group. Okay, so uh, the outline of the presentation, I will first talk about the physical and mathematical motivation. Then I will give um, the, the system we use, the definitions, um, in particular, what happens to the conserved quantities uh, when one applies a spectral uh, transition, and then how to define the stationary probability uh, and what equations uh, the stationary probability uh, fulfills. And then I will show the numerical results, first mentioning the algorithms used, the physical parameters we use to, to, to vary the setting, and then the main result of the first study, which was uh, the scaling of the correlation times and a crossover from two regimes. Okay, and then I will turn to the recent results using the non-perturbative functional renormalization group and give my conclusions. Okay. So about the physical motivation, first of all, let me mention that the 1D truncated in visit burgers is perhaps the simplest non-trivial system where one can study uh, the so-called absolute uh, equilibrium, uh, which in this 1D problem has an energy spectrum scaling as a constant in K. Um, the temporal fluctuations around the equilibrium scaling, they turn out to have a correlation time that scales as k minus one. And this is a general scaling that was found in other studies of uh, truncated systems in two and 3D uh, using the Euler equation, uh, MHD equations, and also the truncated Gross-Pitayevsky dynamics. Uh, let me mention that in the general case of D dimensions, <clears throat> the absolute equilibrium E of k, which has an equipartition of energy, scales, the energy spectrum scales as k to the d minus one. Uh, however, e, e, the, the temporal scaling, so that is you, you set yourself around the absolute equilibrium and you look at correlation functions in time. So this scaling still has a, k, a very general k minus one scaling. <laughs> because of this, um, correlation time cannot be simply related to some kind of an editor of a time uh, defined from the equilibrium energy spectrum. Uh, 
Let, let me mention that K minus one is the same scaling that is well known in turbulence studies as the so-called sweeping effect. But in these turbulence studies, the, the, the sweeping is done by the large scale. So uh, in, this, in this context, we are talking about a flow where the energy is dominated by the large scales. But this is not the case. Uh, of the flows considered here because it's an absolute equilibrium. So K to the D minus one, and one cannot say that it's dominated by the large scales. However, the, the power of K in the scaling is the same. Um, uh, okay, so to, to set up the problem a little bit more, uh, if you look at the truncated inviscid burgers and uh, 1D, and you add some dissipation and noise, um, the, the, this makes the system into the very famous 1D KPZ equation that is well known in statistical physics. Yet, if you look at the literature about this problem, which is known in exquisite details, uh, you find that the perturbative renormalization group predicts two temporal scalings and two only, uh, the linear K minus two Edward Wilkinson scaling and the K minus three half KPZ scaling. So what about the K minus one? Uh, so those are the physical motivation. Here are some references for, for uh, the interested students. The, the original Foster Nelson Stephen paper from the 70s, Dominicis Martin, uh, the KPZ original paper, and um, okay, some some something related to, uh, to uh, truncation in general, and then uh, reference about the very nice uh, detailed results known about uh, KPZ, especially in one uh, mathematical motivation. Well, I, I won't go into it, but um, the, the mathematicians are very aware well, and are very much interested in this problem. Uh, okay, now let me turn to the to the system definition. Okay, uh, let us consider the randomly steered. Uh, randomly forced generalized one D burgers equation. So generalized because I put a lambda in, in front of the nonlinear term. This is the dissipation. And now this is a white noise. Uh, look at the power of this white noise in uh, space. You see there is a derivative here. Uh, this is, and let me insist that one must use this type of noise if one wants to study the results I'm going to talk about for the rest of the talk. Uh, if you define the so-called interface height, which is the spatial integral of the velocity, uh, up to a constant of integration, you obtain the uh, KPZ equation, which looks like this and is uh, very familiar. So uh, if you look at this general system, in the following, I will consider three cases. Uh, one case, which is lambda equal one, nu equal zero, and d equals zero, and this is this will turn out to be just the truncated Burgers case, okay? Because if I remove this, put lambda equal one, it's the inviscid Burgers equation. Then there is uh, the general uh, the linear case where lambda is zero, uh, and the mu and d are finite, and this is the linear system where you can solve everything. It's the um, Edward Wilkinson case and the general case which is the KPZ system. Okay. Um, let me give a note of co uh, cautious. There, there, there are a lot, a lot of works on, on uh, the um, dissipative one debugger equation uh, with many kinds of different correlation in the forcing. Uh, and they are in general concentrate on the scaling of the energy spectrum and on intermittency. Here, this is not the case. If you just look at the energy spectrum, you will see that uh, the thing is completely defined. It's an absolute equilibrium. There is nothing to look for. And so the interest of the system is the correlation time. And this is what we are, the only non-trivial part of the system and the part we are studying here. OK. So in order for you to get a, a better insight of the of what we are talking about, I showed you, I show you here uh, some laptop runs that you can do in 10 minutes on any uh, current laptop. So this is a spatial temporal visualization, X and T. This is the Edward Wilkinson regime, KPZ regime and inviscid regime. Uh, this is a movie of view of XT. 
And this is the spatial temporal thing. So what can we say? There is no structure in the linear case. And in both KPZ and in VC, we see streaks to the right and left that show some tendency of the perturbation to propagate because of the nonlinear term. Uh, let me just mention, so you have in mind the physical characteristic, is that this looks like, um, at a fixed time, like a white noise in uh, space, and it's the actual uh, uh, invariant measure or uh, steady state probability, which is a white noise for the velocity, so it's a Brownian for the interface. So if you remember the interface in the KPZ, in this case, the interface will always be Brownian in space. Okay, now le let me go to the um, definitions of the system. So uh, let us consider a periodic boundaries, boundary condition and the uh, unforced and inviscid Burgers equation. It looks like this in, uh, in Fourier space. And this conserves the total energy, which is uh, given by this. Now, uh, uh, if now you integrate by part the nonlinear term, one can show that in this original system, the, you have an infinite number of conserved quantities, which are uh, the, those momentum of the velocity fields. And uh, OK, the energy is the case n equal to. So let us now consider the so-called spectral truncation. So the idea is that, which is what you do whenever you do some kind of um, uh, numerical procedure, uh, you expand your original Fourier expansion here, you truncate it at some maximum value, Fourier, Fourier expansion. So this translates here by introducing a Galerkin projector, which uh, turn, this is the heavy side function, and this puts to zero all the Fourier modes with k, uh, modulus of k larger than k max. Uh, and a Galerkin truncation, or numerical solution by a standard method, just amounts to replace the field itself by its truncated. So we kill all wave numbers larger than, than k max, the derivative also, and the force on the right, if we have a force on the right, is also projected. OK. So um, now, therefore, the Galerkin truncation version reads like this. I have projected the nonlinear term. Uh, thus, the nonlinear truncated terms explicitly reads like this. OK? So I have a theta of k, p, q, and this is the usual, um, the usual um, quadratic convolution for the nonlinear term with an i k here that corresponds to the derivative. OK, so <clears throat> it is a straightforward by, by simple algebra to, to check, to check out that the nonlinear term verifies these three equations. Now, these three equations uh, corresponds to the following three. Remember, in the non-truncated case, we had an infinite number of uh, um, conserved quantities. Turns out that when we spectrally truncate the system, three of these conservation laws survive the Galerkin truncation. So uh, the conserved quantities P and E are the momentum and the energy of the system. And the third one um, can be used to provide a, a Hamiltonian structure of the problem. Uh, the third one is known to play uh, a role in the thermalization dynamics for special choice of initial conditions, but I will not talk about it further here. Uh, now, let me mention the stationary probabilities. Because the nonlinear truncated terms verifies the Liouville property, that is, if you look um, in the <clears throat> in the phase space, the divergence of the uh, evolution field in the phase space is zero. Uh, and uh, because energy is conserved, you can introduce a micro canonical uh, conserved quantity. Uh, and uh, this micro canonical probability can be well approximated if we have a large number of degrees of freedom, which here means a large truncation wave number. It can be well approximated by the so-called um, canonical distribution, which is written here. Okay, 
And you can also directly uh, find from the energy conservation, the Liouville equation for the probability uh, from which it turns out directly that uh, this, probab this is a stationary probability. And because remember, we know the energy, it's a quadratic, uh, quadratic function of the uh, velocity field, then you can check here that this stationary probability, which is the so-called uh, absolute equilibrium uh, probability, is a white noise in space for you, and therefore a Brownian process for h of x. And this is a stationary solution for the truncated inviscid burgers. Now, uh, what about the other two cases, Edward Wilkinson and KPZ. Then remember uh, to go to from truncated uh, burgers to, to Edward Wilkinson or KPZ, what we have to do is multiply the nonlinear term by lambda and add a dissipation and a force. Well, it's a straightforward to show that in this case, the, station, the probability uh, obeys the following Fokker-Planck equation. So uh, we have if nu and d are zero, the Fokker-Planck equation reduces to the Liouville equation we had before. And uh, due to the uh, forcing term uh, here and dissipation terms here, we have two extra terms in the, the Fokker-Planck equation. And now the central thing about this problem is that the stationary probability we had before is also a solution of the Fokker-Planck equation provided that we have this relation between uh, viscosity, temperature, and noise. And this is because the stationary Gaussian probability uh, put this term to zero, but it also makes an equilibrium between these two terms. So this is the special case about this system. Um, OK, so what about uh, how do we obtain um, our numerical results I'm going to show you. Uh, <clears throat> well, we use um, a standard Fourier pseudospectral method with these aliasing performed by the two-third rule. Uh, okay, uh, okay, we could do some other disaliasing, but it would be, it wouldn't be as efficient and just equivalent. Um, so, uh, okay, so the two uh, this is not very interesting. Uh, the algorithms, uh, so standard spectral method, FFTs, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we use explicit time step, force order Runge-Kutta for the, um, uh, when we have zero noise limit, it uh, reduces to a force order Runge-Kutta. And uh, for large viscosity, there is a, an implicit method. And we do time average uh, over some given time average and uh, time uh, interval, and we have a number of realizations over which we perform an uh, ensemble average. Uh, okay, <laughs> what are the physical parameters of the system? Uh, so we choose to work with 2D periodic boundary conditions, so we fix the, the scale L to 2P. The smallest avail available scale uh, is depends on the resolution and the truncated wave number, which is a third of the resolution. Uh, which is equivalent also to say it depends on the mesh size that will uh, we'll re be reduced when we increase the resolution. And we fix the noise intensity by this relation from the viscosity so that uh, we work always with the same equilibrium. And the computation are performed for, for a, a number of realization, 128 typically. Uh, what are the physical parameters? Uh, okay, before. Uh, so when nu and d are zero, we integrate the inviscid truncated burgers starting from absolute equilibrium and we look at the correlation function. Uh, okay. Uh, and when we put some nu and d, then we are in the KPZ system. So what do we expect from the physical parameters? Uh, it, it will all depend on some scale dependent Reynolds number which you can uh, write like this. So nu is the viscosity, k the wave number. U RMS is the definition of the root mean square velocity 
which we are uh, working with. And remember, we keep this fixed because it's always the same absolute equilibrium. And so we have a, a, um, a Reynolds number as function of viscosity and noise or viscosity alone. And this Reynolds number, uh, if you look at it, it is minimum at the maximum wave number. And uh, here is its value at the maximum wave number, which we call R min. And this is the only parameter apart from the uh, at a given resolution, it's the relevant parameter, how much nonlinearity we have at the highest wave number. And what, what do we expect? On general grounds, we expect Edward Wilkinson scaling when this Reynolds number is very small in front uh, compared to one, because in this case, we expect the system to be dominated by linear behavior. And we also expect in the other limit, when it goes to infinity, that uh, when it will be infinity, we can kill um, <clears throat> both the noise and um, and the dissipation term. So we expect to find the inviscid scaling in this case. And uh, between the two, we are expecting to find uh, KPC scaling. Now, this is indeed what we find. So let me show you some, <clears throat> some of the typical results we have here. So, this is uh, with 1,024 uh, mesh points and 128 resolution. Uh, what I've done here is a 2D a contour plot of the log of the correlation function. So remember, we are looking at time correlation. So I compute for each wave number k the correlation of u of k with u of, uh, of u of kt with u of k zero, I normalize it by u by the correlation at zero time. And this gives me the correlation function as a function of time for each wave number. And we take the log of that as function of log k and uh, log of time. And we make, um, 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 we make uh, equivalue curves and um, uh, simple scaling would be a straight line like this. So here I've indicated the inviscid K minus one scaling. Here are the KPZ scaling. And here you have the Edward Wilkinson scaling. And now the crossover when you change from um, Remember, the only thing we are changing is the Reynolds number at the smaller scales or higher wave number. You get this scaling. So this is the K minus two Edward Wilkinson. This is um, the K minus two son KPZ. And this is the K minus one uh, inviscid. So it's maybe better to look at this graph where I have compensated by K to the three half. Um, so this is the correlation time, the time in which the correlation function has decreased by a factor of one half. Uh, this time as function of wave number compensated by the KPZ scaling for a various number of Reynolds number. So you see that when the Reynolds number goes to zero, which are the red things, we indeed get the KPZ um, the EW Edward Wilkinson K minus two scaling that you see coming from high wave numbers. But in this case, when you go to lower wave number, you recover the, here we have a compensation by K three halves. So this is the KPZ scaling that comes when you go in the infrared. On the other hand, <clears throat> uh, when the Reynolds number, so, this the critical point here from green to red is um, between one one and one tenth, something like that. You when when you go now to higher and higher Reynolds number, you finally at infinite Reynolds number get the k minus one inviscid scaling, and um, if you look at the crossover, you see that if you start with lower Reynolds number, you first see the Edward Wilkinson and then you go to the KPZ. 
And if you have a very high Reynolds number, you first see the K minus one in VC scaling, and then you go to KPZ. Okay. And this is the cross, this is the general crossover. Um, what about the inviscid correlation times? The inviscid correlation times, we can say something at this level, a simple theoretical thing about them is that there is a simple computation you can do, which is compute the second time derivative of the correlation function as the correlation of twice the first derivative. And then the first derivative, you use the equation of motions. So you have something quadratic here and quadratic here in the um, field. And if you put t equal t prime, these quadratic things are both at t equals zero. So it's a fourth order moment of a Gaussian that you can um, compute. And uh, when you do this, you find indeed the scaling at k minus one for the second order derivative. Uh, of the correlation function. Okay, and let me show you uh, once you rescale uh, the correlation function. This is the KPZ case, and in the this is an inset from four to eight, four to eight. So it's difficult to see here, but the correlation function actually becomes negative, and the continuous curve is some exact result from Schwun and the points are our numerical results. So this is to say that we do indeed recover what's in our system, what's known about the KPZ case in the, in the correct limit. Uh, and now this is the case at um, with the zero noise uh, infinite Reynolds number. This is the theoretical parabola uh, I showed on the previous slide. Uh, this is an inset where you see the parabola for, sorry, for smaller, smaller values uh, up to zero two, you see the parabola gives a nice fit. And you see that the general uh, correlation function has one three scale. It scales indeed as k minus one, just like the parabola and falls on some, some curve we get uh, numerically here. Um, now, what about, um, so uh, we had other results such that uh, uh, of the distribution of the interface paid PDF and stuff like that. I will not have time to go into that. I now turn to, to the results from the, the functional renormalization group. So um, what, what is the situation about the, the three scaling behavior we had for the time correlation function? So what is known um, what is known uh, from a perturbative uh, renormalization group is that there are fixed points corresponding to the Edward Wilkinson and KPZ reg regime. And so the second work come from, came from a suggestion by Leonie Canet, which has maybe, maybe there is a third fixed point in that we cannot, that cannot be found by perturbative means. Uh, maybe there is in a suitably defined functional renormalization group, there is a third, um, a third um, fixed point that corresponds to the uh, inviscid scaling, inviscid burger scaling. Um, so indeed, now I'm, I'm starting to show results uh, from, um, from the later paper. Uh, indeed, um, what is shown in the PRL is that this one is a result from a simplified model. So note that in this model, uh, there is a, a, a parameter that controls the nonlinearity, and that is the nonlinearity divided by one plus the nonlinearity. So <laughs> for very small nonlinearities, it's like G, but for very large G, it's like one. And in this simple model, there is a, this equation of of um, of um, motion in the in the renormalization functional renormalization group framework, and with this simple model, one can check that there are indeed three fixed points. One which is um, uh, stable in the only stable infrared fixed.
fixed point, which corresponds to the KPZ scaling. And now you have two other fixed points, the well-known Edward Wilkinson Gaussian fixed point, and a new one that is now at an infinite value of the original complete Gaussian, which corresponds to one for W. So it's the one that is drawn here. And what happens is uh, that you can understand what we saw in the numerical crossover before. If you start from a value close to the, this fixed point that is a very large nonlinearity, it's unstable, but you stay there for some time and then boom, you go to the Edward Wilkinson, uh, sorry, to the KPC thing and the inverse with the Edward Wilkinson, uh, it goes like that. So you, you recover the, the KPC thing in the infrared and these two st unstable uh, fixed points are stable when you go to the UV and you have two, two, two stable fixed points in the UV and then everything is explained. Now there is- um, uh, Mark, you, you have 10 more minutes. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm almost finished, comments. thank you. Okay. I'm almost finished, I only have two, or two slides. So let me show you just um, uh, the more quantitative results. So this is the same plot that we saw before. And now you can see the corresponding fixed points. So now this is a more evolved approximation which uh, she calls next to leading order. And um, when you do this, not only do you get the good numbers, but even the fixed points, which are here, um, what are they? This is the, K uh, I believe this is the, well, okay. Yeah, the, this one is the Invisid, and this one is the KPZ, and this one is the Edward Wilkinson. So it works very well, and you get uh, even the, good form of the correlation rescale correlation function. So let me summarize my result. So the 1D truncated in visit burgers is the simplest system in which to study this uh, absolute equilibrium scaling problem. Um, K minus one scaling is, is, is found there. And this was unper, unpredicted by the perturbative renormalization group. Um, uh, now that we use the more recently the non-perturbative functional renovation group, and then we have a unified description in terms of um, um, statistical physics things, saying that all these um, scaling and crossover can be explained by uh, fixed points of the renormalization group. Thank you. Questions, comments? Thank you very much for a very interesting talk. Uh, I have one question. I mean, um, when people simulate uh, the KPC equation in, uh, in one dimension, then another method is just to use uh, spatial discretization. And I wonder, you know, how the two methods actually compare. I mean, the guy like in what you presented and the one where you do a spatial dis discretization. Okay, the important thing here is what are the quantities that are, that are exactly conserved in the discrete. So if the, the, the question is that, uh, does the um, discretization conserve energy in uh, the limit where viscosity goes to zero? And provided it does that, you will recover the same thing. Uh, of course, if, if energy is not conserved in this limit, you, you cannot take um, the inviscid limit where you have no forcing, no dissipation, and you just integrate your discrete system and it moves happily around absolute equilibrium. This necessitates energy conservation. So, so the answer is uh, you should find the same thing provided that your method um, conserves energy. For the questions, so, uh, very nice talk, Mark. I don't understand the details of the functional renormalization group, but is it good enough? For example, if you apply it to the inviscid burgers to get, let us say, bifractal scaling or something. Well. Uh, this I don't know, and 
but but you don't expect bifractal scaling, as you know, well known in this case. I mean, it has been applied in this specific case, which is um, uh, the case with this specific noise and the absolute value equilibrium. So it, more generally, the re I know they have plenty of results for many, many different systems. I, I don't know, you should ask Leonie, I don't know if they have a specific result in this other case. It's a good question though. I have a question. Uh, if you get back to your uh, one of your slides, uh, figure two with the RIG, RG flow. Yeah, that one. Oh, so you have the RG, RG flow, one of the last, that, that one. So you have flow going up, going up to the KPZ fixed line, but you have flow going uh, the downwards, right? It yeah. seems that you, you should have like another line of fixed points or maybe uh, by topological reasons. There is one here and one here. In between these two flows, you have a flow up and a flow down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You should have something like a, a limiting cycle or something like that. Uh, no, it's it's mm -hmm. when you go in, you have one fixed point when you go. That is stable when you go to the infrared and this is the KPC. And it's, it's in a 1D problem. So this thing is unstable because we are in it's unstable. So if you are above, you go above and if you are below, you go below. So when you go to the UV, it's unstable. Uh, and, and then it goes to UV stable points. The one at zero, um, at zero lambda, which is the Edward Wilkinson and the one at infinite lambda, which is the new one. So, well, uh, my impression is that, for instance, if you move to the right, then the, the lines that are going down, they flip. They start to go up, the RG flow. Yeah, so it's the Zero. arrows here are, are written the to go to the, inf to the ultraviolet. So if you go to the infrared, it goes like this, and this line is stable. And if you go to the ultraviolet, this line and these lines are stable. Okay. Okay, you mean infrared versus uh, ultraviolet, that's why... Yes, have... absolutely, it reverses the, the direction of the renovation. Right, I got that. Okay. Further questions? Yeah. Uh, thanks for your talk. Um, so you have one over K scaling, right? Yes. So that's a turnover time. So how do you interpret that even in the statistical equilibrium when you have K equal one with very little amount of energy, you still get this kind of uh, sweeping like scaling. Well, I, I don't know if you if you can really call it sweeping. It's sweeping like, as you said. And um, I don't know. You, you, I mean, you should ask Leonie for any insight from the renormalization group. What, what I know is that they have the same, there is a, a, an extra de demonstration if you look at the last PRL, when you get the same scaling in a different limit, that is in a limit where the wave number goes to infinity. So I have a feeling that perhaps if you look at this demonstration, the, the other scaling where you get K minus one, but not uh, for, for in the special limit k goes to nu goes to zero first and then k goes to infinity so maybe you'll find something interesting here and by the way this limit works also for Nagy stokes so there is a point to look there i suspect that it might be related to your questions but i'm not familiar enough with the uh, renormalization functional version of the renormalization group to be absolutely sure about my answer Let's uh, thank the speaker again.